So we're here at the SID Display Week, and uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Ross Young. I'm the CEO and founder of a company called Display Supply Chain Consultants. So um, do you work in the display, display uh, supply chain and you consult them? Yes, we uh, track and forecast what's happening in the entire display supply chain, ranging from the equipment that goes into the fab and the materials that are used on the displays to the panels and to the OEMs and brands and retailers and uh, the financial analysts that follow the display industry as well. So um, what's going on with China? China has uh, announced a number of uh, government subsidies, both at the local level and national level, to subsidize new fabs in the display industry to build capacity. And essentially, they are uh, taking a lot of market share and forcing companies in Korea and Taiwan to um, have to innovate uh, in order to survive. And uh, we expect the Chinese to take a lot of market share, the Chinese companies to take a lot of market share. And for, in order for the Korean and Taiwanese companies to survive, they're going to have to innovate, come out with new products like foldable displays and micro LEDs and, and products like that. Sunlight readable displays? Sunlight readable displays is another one, something that uh, the Chinese companies, the commodity displays that aren't available, uh, something you could use outside that is, has a very long lifetime, it's still very uh, readable, is reflective things like that. Because we want to have phones and laptops that last for 50 hours, 100 hours in the battery, not just like right. 5 to 10 hours, right? Yeah, one of the Is problems, yeah, one of the problems with the uh, Apple Watch, for example, is you have to charge it nightly. Um, so if you could have a display that could last a week with, before, without charging, uh, that would be a much better solution. Like my memory LCD, but it's a little bit hard to read. So, and how yeah. about, uh, how about uh, some, some, are they going to, because in the last decade, maybe Taiwan and Korea, uh, just didn't want to take too many risks, so they were just doing basic kind of displays, and now they have to take risks. Um, I would say that they've uh, they didn't want to compete in the commodity markets, and so they've gone after a lot more niches. Um, but now you have a number of companies all going after the same niche, so that means it becomes a commodity. So they have to work harder at finding different niches, and uh, we see a, a lot of interest in all of these new technologies going after n more niche applications, and so that these companies can can survive in the market. And uh, just as a small aside, uh, Europe and USA, just, just nothing? Uh, there is the possibility of Foxconn building a factory in the US. The state of Wisconsin has agreed to subsidize that factory up to three billion dollars. Um, if they, dis if they uh, build less capacity, the subsidy will be smaller. So it, it, it will scale with uh, the amount of jobs that are created. Um, and in Europe, there's certainly uh, nothing. And that will be displays? That will be displays. The intent was to make very large TVs in Wisconsin. The shipping costs are actually a big chunk of the cost for a large display. So if you could build it locally and ship it to Best Buy in Minnesota by truck instead of by air uh, or by boat, you could save a lot of money and it would create a lot of jobs. And that's something that uh, President Trump has uh, been very focused on is bringing more manufacturing jobs so it actually could in include TVs and there was um, tariffs uh, that are rumored to be created to make it even easier to, to justify building display fabs in the U.S. So uh, there's definitely in the SID display, we, there's lots of examples of awesome new things happening. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty to, for them to choose from the, the Korean and the Taiwanese. Like micro LEDs are pretty awesome, right? Yeah, micro LEDs are great, but right now they're very expensive to manufacture. So you could build a prototype, but if you want to compete in a very price sensitive market, um, it's not going to be acceptable. So they're still working on how to bring the cost down. Um, and, uh, but like the Apple Watch would be a logical um, implementation, initial implementation because the brightness is very good. The battery life is really is much better than where OLEDs are um, or where LCDs are. So it's a natural application and it doesn't have too high a resolution. So the cost uh, is more manageable because LEDs scale with the, the cost scales with the number of pixels. So are we, are we definitely going to see this dream like uh, flexible phone that just folds? and becomes huge or that you flex and put in the pocket and um, doesn't the, scratch? It's very, very interesting. So uh, right now, uh, the, full, the flexible display costs three or four times more than a rigid display, yet you cannot flex it in the final product. So there's no incentive for manufacturers to buy flexible displays. However, the industry is building all of this flexible display capacity. So these flexible display prices are going to come down and companies are going to work harder and harder to differentiate their flexible displays by creating these innovative foldable 
products that are going to consume all of that capacity. So we, we see a lot of interest in foldable displays. The problem is there are a lot of challenges to be able to make a display that can last three years with all of these folds, given the materials have never been folded before. So you have uh, you have adhesive materials that are that cannot delaminate over 100,000 folds and must also now create some sort of slippage between the layers so that uh, it reduces the stress. You have, a, instead of having a, a Gorilla Glass cover, you want to have a plastic cover so that when you drop it, it's unbreakable. And it has to be very, very thin. Um, and you, yet, uh, when it's thin, it's soft, but it also has to be hard so that you can't scratch it. Um, so you have a lot of challenges to build the materials that go on top of the OLED or the TFT uh, to withstand all that folding that have never been in that position or asked to do that before. Would it make sense because people pay seven, eight hundred dollars for a phone? Would it make sense to kind of have the display be kind of modular? So like people before would swap a battery after a year mm -hmm. or two, maybe you'd swap the screen after a year because it gets scratched up. But you just pay a hundred dollars or something right. That's just right. for the display. Is that right. enough to cover a display? Um, flexible and everything? Uh, probably not. I mean, you can buy a flexible display right now for $70 or $80, um, but then the cost of shipping it to the uh, regional uh, Apple store and, and making that uh, replacement for a flexible display would certainly add a lot of cost, and the labor to do the, the uh, replacement would add a lot of cost. Maybe but it should be user re replaceable. Yeah, I think I think you're going to see the foldable phones come out for like fifteen hundred dollars or two thousand dollars because the volume is going to be pretty limited, and uh, they're going to charge a lot of money for it. But it's going to come down in price as more brands uh, start um, entering that market and offering lower margins. But it'll start high because you'll have companies like Apple and Samsung who have high margin requirements uh, introducing those products. So I love those reflective displays, and I've been doing videos about the like a decade ago about Pixel Chi mm -hmm. and then the, there's there was uh, Liqua Vista was trying to do stuff and mm -hmm. it was acquired by all kinds of companies Samsung Amazon and all right. I don't know what, what happened with that and then um, there's clear ink right here yeah and uh, e-ink is awesome so yeah. what, what is happening is it really happening are uh, we, we going to get those amazing displays that just works in the sunlight yeah, I don't think the, uh, I heard that the Amazon investment in Liqua Vista is uh, not panning out. Um, so we don't expect to see that product come to market, but I think there's renewed interest in new, new investment has gone into this company Clearink that can do both color and video in a reflective display. And, and they're ramping up now. They're working with Merck, who is also an investor and they have uh, uh, IP on the material. So Merck is uh, heavily motivated to do this as well. And uh, the, the, display, the prototypes keep getting better and better, and so they have a real opportunity.